your fitness business podcast snapshot. How to choose which group exercise certifications are acceptable and credible. We discuss who should pay for ongoing education, the instructor or the facility. Plus, Darren shares ways to recognize and reward group exercise excellence. All of that and more coming up in today's show. Welcome to the industry's leading business podcast for fitness owners and managers. This month's interviews are brought to you by a podcast partner, One Fit Stop. One Fit Stop is a modern fitness studio software built for the growing multi-location studio, providing scheduling, client management, programming, payment collection tools, and more that will set your business up to grow, grow, grow. To find out more, go to onefitstop.com or click on the link in today's show notes. FVP family, I have a super important question to ask you all. Would you like to be the next host of the Fitness Business Podcast? As many of you know, I have been hosting the show since we launched in 2015. It has, without a doubt, been the best job of my entire life. And there is rarely a day that goes by that I'm not grateful for having met someone through an interview or having heard that we've helped someone's career because they've been listening to the show. With that said, I am a firm believer that in order to grow as a person and to grow in our life and and our careers and to be the best that we can be, we sometimes need to take a leap of faith and step out of our comfort zone. So with that being said, after five years of hosting this incredible show, I've made the decision to step away from the microphone at the end of June 2020. Now, the exciting news for you is that we are now on the lookout for a brand new host. As the host of the show, you'll have opportunities to interview international authors, consultants, coaches, and experts, plus people in the trenches who are really making a difference in our industry. In addition to that, you'll have the opportunity to build your profile in the international fitness industry. Now, if that sounds like your dream job, then make sure that you go ahead and apply today. All you need to do is go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash host. Well, following on from that huge news, let's jump into this week's show. My special guest this week is Darren Jacobson. He's the Senior Vice President of Instructor Programming for Zumba Fitness LLC based in Miami. Darren holds a bachelor's degree in human movement science and is a featured writer for numerous fitness industry publications. In addition, Darren sits on the Idea Program Directors Committee and is an URSA industry expert in the field of personal training. Darren was previously with the Virgin Active Group in South Africa as the head of product for their chain of 100 plus health clubs. He's a recognized speaker at conventions including URSA, Idea, CanFit Pro, and Phylex, and has presented at conventions across South Africa, Canada, the USA, and Asia. Now, in just a minute, we're going to hear from Darren to chat about best practices in group exercise training and management. But first, here's a message from our podcast partner, One Fit Stop. If you're tired of old studio software that's constantly raising prices without increasing value, then talk to One Fit Stop, where their platform is constantly evolving to meet the needs of growing studio businesses. Go to onefitstop.com to find out more. Enjoy this week's interview with my special guest, Darren Jacobson. Darren, welcome along. We are absolutely thrilled to have you on the show today. Thanks so much. Super excited to be joining you. So today we're talking about best practices in group exercise training and in management. So when it comes to group exercise instructors or group fitness instructors, how do you go about choosing which certifications are acceptable within your facility and and how do we know which ones are actually credible? That's a great question. You know, we're in an industry that's 
has varying levels of regulation across the globe. And so, you know, if you're in a country which has very strong legislation, for example, Brazil, where you need to have a degree and be registered with an organization to teach fitness classes, the requirements are very different to, let's say, India, where there's not much regulation at all. And so, you know, when it comes to the whole conversation around certification and trainings, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a landmine because there are different regulations and there are different requirements in different places. And I think the way that I look at it is in a deregulated industry like ours, um, we need to ask ourselves, what does the employer require? So if the employer requires you to have a certain level of qualification, well, that kind of dictates which certification you need to look at. And so I kind of look at it from the back end because, you know, if you look at law and you look at medicine, you look at finance, globally, there's checks and balances in place that determine what is a credible lawyer or a credible um, doctor, whereas in our industry, that's not necessarily there. So taking it from the ground up approach, what does the employer require? And many fitness facilities nowadays are demanding certain levels of qualification for their staff, not only from the point of view of being credible and being safe, but also being versatile. And especially in the world of group exercise, that versatility, I think, is, is really key, not only for the facility, but also for the instructor to make them a lot more marketable. So I would say, first of all, we need to recognize that not all certifications are equal. Secondly, we need to recognize that our industry is deregulated. And, you know, for someone like myself who works across you know, many different countries, that's very hard to navigate mm. because you have government involvement and then you have local union involvement. And so that's when I look at, at it from the perspective of the employer. What, is, what do they need for their instructors? Um, do those courses that um, are recognized, do they have continuing education credits associated? So let me give an example, Chantal. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the European Union, in Europe, you can become a fitness professional and 60% of the current certification providers in Europe do not require any continuing education from the day you get licensed or certified, the day you get certified as a fitness professional forever. So in other words, you can become a fitness professional and for the next 15, 20 years, there's no requirement for you across 60% of the certifications in Europe to do any continuing education, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously in places sure, like right. Australia, you have um, Fitness Australia and other organizations, you have reps, etc. There it's a lot more um, regulated and there's a far higher expectation. And so, you know, taking it from that point of view, it does become very, very hard as a fitness professional to determine which certifications are the ones that would make sense for me to do. And so whenever I'm speaking to fitness professionals, the first thing I ask them is, what does your employer require? If you're going to go off on your own and open your own studio, what do you need in order to qualify for liability insurance, for professional indemnity insurance, et cetera? Um, what are the credible courses out there that make you stand head and shoulders above the competitors in the same space that you're in as well? So it really is a, an in-depth, hands-dirty approach to certifications. You need to really get into the weeds and understand how that all fits together. It's a, it's a difficult one. I really appreciate those questions that, that you just suggested that we ask. And I love that you brought up that ongoing education piece because as a group fitness instructor myself, I find it extraordinary that any group fitness instructor or any employer for that matter would want to work with someone who hasn't done some type of ongoing education. You know, if I got certified 10 years ago, then I would hope that I have updated, you know, my education since that time because the fitness industry changes so rapidly and the research and the knowledge changes so rapidly that I would really, really hope that a group fitness instructor would want to learn and continue to learn and that an employer would want to employ someone who uh, can prove that they have been learning on a consistent basis. So I think your approach of really thinking about what is it that the employer is looking for and to ask ourselves those questions is such a fantastic and important foundation. 
And it leads me perfectly onto our next question, Darren, because I would love you to talk to us about some of the best practices that you've seen around standards and guidelines regarding the hiring criteria for instructors or trainers within our business. Right. So, and that's that's a critical aspect in the world of group exercise. And like you've mentioned, you know, group exercise is very fluid. What we find in in that space is that gym managers, group X managers, are focused on a couple of metrics. When it comes to hiring, what they're really looking for is somebody that's going to create the environment. Now, environment is not necessarily determined by qualification, right? So you could have people that are fairly simply qualified getting 20, 30 people in a class, and you can have people that are highly qualified attracting no one. And so when you're going through the hiring process, it really is an audition process. And the things that I look for, and I encourage group exercise managers and club managers to look for, is you need to think about the hiring process as that first opportunity to make a connection. And you need to think about what is that journey before somebody even steps into the audition process. What is the journey that somebody has to take to be considered to be hired by your facility. And the reason I raised this is a couple of weeks ago, I connected with a facility. And in order to, to get a class on a schedule for an instructor, required that instructor to go through significant background checks, very intensive process that took weeks to, to, to come to completion. And so if your hiring process is that rigid, now I know that there are certain things from a health and safety perspective. Mm -hmm. If you're working with kids, you know, all of those criminal background checks, et cetera, need to be done. But if you're putting a wall up for potential instructors as a starting point, that's going to very much narrow the funnel of potential instructors coming through. So the first thing I encourage them to do is go through your, your hiring process like you would as a potential instructor and see how difficult it is to navigate. Because if it's very difficult, that Group X instructor is not going to push through. They're going to go down the road to somebody that has a simpler process that will get them on the schedule within a week or two and away they go. So assuming that your, your background check process and the process to get in front of that audition is a fairly simple one, yet clear and detailed, the things that I would look for, obviously, are qualification um, and understanding of the environment that the person is auditioning to be a part of. But then I also look for attitude. And I always talk about eyes and teeth. If somebody can connect using their eyes, and they can smile using their teeth, and they create this connection with people in that space. That's what group exercise is all about. And when you think about the evolution of group X and how we now have boutique studios popping up, most people will stop going to a facility, whether it's a big box facility or a boutique, because the instructor that they either connected with has left or the person teaching the class doesn't connect directly with them. That instructor is golden for the facility. And so when you're going through that hiring process, for me, best practice is how does that instructor connect with the person at the back of the room? How do they make you feel welcome and drawn into that location? How do they connect, connect or make a lasting impression on the people in the class? And what's going to get those people to come back? Because ultimately, what I'm selling as a gym or facility or studio is repeat visits. I want people to come back time and time and time again. And the Group X instructor can be a great catalyst to making that happen. So try not to make your hiring process too laborious. Do your background checks as quickly as you can. Hire on attitude. I always say hire quickly and fire even quicker. If you feel the energy is not there and the person isn't right for the facility, you need to move on and find somebody else. Um, I would also say hire on eyes and teeth set a rate that is at least competitive or at least have benefits that are competitive to the other facilities that are out there so that you're in that, that realm. You don't want to go and price yourself way too low, but there are ways, especially in facilities that are cash strapped, they're worried about the operating expenses. So I think what's very important is to set a rate that is competitive or at least a rate that you can bundle in a different benefits to make it competitive for your facility relative to other facilities in the area. So if you're cash strapped 
or you're struggling from an operational perspective with a cash flow and you're trying to bring in these strong, credible instructors, you may be able to negotiate a slightly lower rate due to the benefits that your facility has, whether it be childcare or some other you know, continuing education credit benefits where you send them on courses. So that's definitely something to consider as well. So once you've set the rate and you've determined that it's fairly competitive, um, you need to share your vision with the instructor so that they're part of that journey and they don't feel disconnected from the facility. And then very important is to set very clear expectations about the experience in the facility. So you arrive 15 minutes before, you know the room, you're adaptable, uh, you're a cheerleader, you're a motivator, you set the tone and energy of the class, um, you bring the positive energy, etc. So having a very clear set of expectations for the Group X Instructor, I think, really summarizes the entire hiring and audition process to find the best instructors. Darren, thank you for giving us such a comprehensive overview on those best practices. And there's a few things that really stood out to me. Uh, in particular, I, I love that you mentioned that attitude and the eyes and teeth is something to look out for in the audition process and really early on, because I think any of us who are listening right now that has ever walked into a group fitness class knows how different the experience can be from a member's perspective. If you have someone who is smiling and engaging and making eye contact with you and has a great energy versus someone that has just an instructor that has just walked into the door and had a bad day and brought that bad day in with them. And, and that energy, good or bad, automatically exudes into that class and to those members it automatically transports to those members so I'm so glad that you mentioned that as such an important part of that process and I also wanted to uh, just touch on what you talked about with vision and setting KPIs for our instructors because one of my fears is that quite often instructors aren't necessarily seen or treated as part of the overarching business and, and perhaps their importance isn't always recognised within a facility. And something as simple as ensuring that we are sharing the vision of the business, they understand the business, they understand what the expectations are of them as an instructor and the KPIs is such an engaging process for that instructor to feel connected and I feel as though if you were to do that with your instructors then you've got much more chance of them talking positively about their classes promoting their classes on social media telling their friends and their community about the classes that they're teaching within your facility so thank you for including that as one of the best practices that we should do with our group fitness instructors and departments Darren, I wanted to come back to the ongoing education that we talked about earlier. I think we've already identified that we, we agree that that's such an important component for our instructors. My question for you is, in your experience, do you feel as though the facility should pay for that ongoing education or is it the responsibility of the instructor to pay to stay educated? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think there are different ways to look at it. And of course, you know, when you when I stand here and I say facilities should pay, there are many facilities out there that don't have the cash flow to pay for those types of things. Let's be real about the world of group exercise. If you're a big box facility, that's a different story. And of course, if you're in areas like California in the US, where you need to pay instructors for continuing education, for preparation for classes, that racks up very quickly. And so I have, a, I have an approach to this issue, which I think balances out both. I think firstly, as an instructor, you need to ask yourself, what is the importance of continuing education? And how is that going to help me stand above the other competitors in my field? Because if I want to be that subject matter expert, if I want to be interviewed for podcasts, if I want to be in blogs or if I want to be in local news, I need to be the subject matter expert. And I can't wait for a facility to find the funds to help me to upskill myself. And so there is a responsibility and an onus on me as the instructor to do that myself. 
And so there are a couple of reasons why I think it's critical, firstly, for instructors to invest in themselves. Some of them are no-brainers. It does help you stand above the competitors. It helps you to stay fresh so you don't get bored with the same formats. It reinforces your knowledge and broadens your scope of practice. And like I said, it allows you to become a subject matter expert. Now, when you look at it from the other side, which is the facility paying for the instructor to get that continuing education, there is definitely a benefit to the facility if they're able to do that. And where you have Group X instructors that are independent contractors and they have the freedom to go to whichever facility they want, being able to pay some of their continuing education, being able to find multiple classes on your schedule to secure their income is a huge advantage for some of the bigger box facilities or for some of the facilities that want to keep that Group X instructor close because you're not able to necessarily create a situation where you have a restraint of trade. They can go where they want to and earn money the way that they can. But I think from a facilities point of view, if I can pull my instructor in and say, listen, there are courses that I'm going to send you on throughout the year and I'm comfortable to invest in your education. However, in order to do that, I need you to teach two to three classes a week on my schedule. And while you're doing that, I'm also going to help to raise your profile in the facility as well. That's fairly compelling for instructors that don't want to spend their time driving between cities and spending all their money on gas mm -hmm. just to teach classes. And so I think that there are two sides to look at it. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if you don't start or don't continue to learn, you might as well retire because you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. You need to continue to keep moving forward as a fitness professional. And this industry is hugely dynamic and often disrupted by new trends that are coming in. And so as an instructor, especially in the world of group exercise, we need to stay up to date, whether that's on us or on the facility. I couldn't agree more, Darren. Thank you so much for your uh, perspective on that. Now, earlier on when we were talking about best practices, you brought up uh, the rate, so the rate that we pay our instructors, and you also mentioned that there are other ways of recognising their contribution to our business. I would love to hear from your perspective the best example that you've actually seen of a facility that has recognised excellence within their group fitness department or for a specific instructor. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, and I think, Chantal, in the world of social media and this transient nature that we're seeing out there with people that are influencers and people that are connectors, this is a really interesting one for me because, you know, the days of just being recognized by pay and by a rate within a facility that is above other instructors doesn't necessarily create uh, engagement and retention of instructors. And so for me, when I look at facilities out there, whether it's, you know, Crunch or Equinox or um, some of the other lifetime, other big box facilities, or even the boutiques that are profiling their instructors on social media, you're creating these local heroes mm. and building their profile. And I, and I have to really amplify that message because the nature of social media, when you look at the, the celebrity instructors that are teaching Peloton, or you look at some of the high profile instructors that are being showcased by facilities, whether it's Crunch or Equinox, that recognition, I think, is very significant because for that instructor to invest the time, effort, and money to grow their profile, the way that the facility can help them grow their profile is going to be hugely expensive. Mm. And so one of the best examples for me would be using Group X instructors for advertising campaigns, um, sending instructors to conferences, or getting instructors to present at conferences on behalf of the facility for whether it's a signature program they've created or a program that the facility has. Obviously paying them you know, additional rates based on the number of participants in their classes, which encourages them to draw more people in. So that's a great way to recognize. Let's share some of the responsibility of filling our classes. We'll pay you a higher rate based on the number of people that attend. But of course, that comes with, you know, the conflict of, well, my class is at a bad time. Well, then you make it relative. If at a bad time, the average number is eight and you get it to 12, you get compensated. In a good time, if the average number is 25 and you get it to 35, you get compensated. And sometimes, you know, it's simply 
just being recognized by the club manager. And I know that sounds really strange, but there are many club managers out there, general managers, that don't go near their Group X studio. They're fearful. They don't understand. It's dramatic. The members are vocal. The instructors are vocal. And just to have that Group X or that, that club manager recognize top instructor of the month is something that is, I think, pretty significant. So despite all the other things, which are the high level, getting them involved in social media, digital workouts at home for some of those facilities that have apps that are taking the gym outside of the walls, just that simple recognition, I think, is critical. Okay, so let's now jump into my favorite part of the show. For this week's Keep Me Fit Bispiration, I asked Darren to share three ways to provide career pathways for group fitness instructors. Get your pen ready now for Keep Me's Fit Bispiration. Yeah, sure, no problem. So I think for instructors to advance in a facility. I think the one opportunity would be programming. And by programming, I think the instructors are close to the ground. They hear what members are wanting. And often a facility will default to the program that they've always had on the schedule because they know that that typically gets decent numbers into the studio. And I think there are Group X instructors out there that have tremendous potential to develop content and programs. And I encourage them from a career perspective, to use their voice and to share that with the, the Group X manager and to do some tests. If they're able to put together a concept or a format um, that would make sense in the facility, it would be great for them to showcase what they can do. And at least what it's showing is a level of motivation and involvement in the facility. So I think one thing would be consider adding additional programming, consider adding additional thoughts and insights and also sharing feedback from the ground up. Because like you've said, the GM is not going to go into the studio unless they're a very involved GM. And a Group X instructor is standing in front of 20, 30 people every single day. And so hearing what people have to say, sharing that with the GM, sharing that with the Group X manager and considering concepts and programming that could help to elevate the profile of Group X is definitely one thing. I would say in order to advance your career in group exercise, I would suggest that they speak the language of the Group X manager and the club manager. You know, when Group X instructors are talking about the average number of attendees in their class having increased or decreased, or the cost per head of uh, the instructors or the participants in their class. That that language doesn't come through very often because not a lot of Group X instructors understand the world of the club manager and the Group X manager. So there is that converse relationship where the management team is looking at average number of attendees, cost per head, um, usage to access, and all of those types of metrics. And so I think in order to advance my career as a Group X instructor, if management is an area that I want to go into, then I would encourage them to start to identify and use that language. How can Group XIs be used as a tool in the club and show the Group X manager, the club manager, that you as an instructor have a broader understanding of the business of group exercise rather than just the execution. So that would be the second. And I think the third thing in order to continue to evolve my career would be to stay on top of trends. And those are things like social media, um, TikTok, hashtag challenges, being aware of what's new and current and fresh. And more than being aware of what's new and current and fresh is speak the language of the demographic in your club. If you have a club that has a lot of millennials, you need to be able to understand what's happening on social media. Are they doing you know, the different dances that are trending out there? And are you keeping your classes current and fresh? If you have an older active population, you know, how are you making sure that your content is relevant for them and that it is up to date with where the latest science and research is in order to benefit them the most? So I would say the three things for me are understanding the concepts and you know, sharing insights and growing programs, learning about 
the formal management of the Group X program and speaking the language of the club manager and the Group X manager to showcase how you can be better utilized and more involved. And then thirdly, to stay up to date on trends in the industry, the latest science, the latest research to the benefit of your members. Fantastic advice to finish up on today, Darren. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to share your expertise with us. I feel very blessed because I know how busy you are and to hear your experience on these and your advice in this area is, is something that we are exceptionally grateful for, Darren. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us on the show today. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Keep me smarter member retention. Keepme.ai. A huge thank you to Darren for joining us on the show today. And if you want to connect with Darren, then make sure you head over to our show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Now, here's a message from our podcast partner, Team Rockstar Fit. Team Rockstar Fit is an award-winning mastermind team that helps fit pros lead happy and balanced lives. Get mentoring and support. Learn how to grow your business online with Beachbody. You can apply for a free consultation today at teamrockstarfit.com. Quickfire 5. This week's Quickfire 5 guest is the founder and CEO of Spartan Race, Joe DeSena. Joe, welcome along. Absolutely thrilled to have you on the show today. Um, I'm so excited. We're talking uh, between two continents. This is great. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's the beginning of my day and the end of your day. So we are going to get straight into the questions today. And can you tell us why do you do what you do? I love it. I just, I love giving people a kick in the ass and getting them going. And I mean, it, the, the sadistic side of it, people think I'm a little nuts. Like I, I love torturing people, but I do it, I do it lovingly. Like I wish somebody woke me up at 5 a.m. every morning and made me work out hard. I got to do it on my own, you know? And so I'm just like, I'm the accountability partner for the world. Absolutely. I love that. And tell us, are there any rituals that help you become better at what you do? You know what? They're all rituals, right? They're little tiny commitments little tiny decisions, little tiny habits that I've got to uh, take on daily, like uh, drinking a bunch of water, uh, waking up very early, getting a sweat on every single day. I got to do my workout, going to bed early, cold showers. And so I don't know, they're all, they're all little things. My mom was into this stuff back in the seventies. And so I just incorporated it into my life and it's like, um, Hey, listen, People brush their teeth every day. Why can't they go for a run every day, right? Why can't they take a cold shower every day? That's what I do. So, Joe, are there any apps or systems that you would use to stay in control of your workload? I would, I'm kind of a Flintstone. I, if, if I had to use a, um, a piece of electronics or, you know, something digital or with electricity to keep me on target, it would be like a, one of those cow prodding tools. You know, I'd want somebody to just like electrocute me every once in a while. <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm not an app person. I'm not a big um, tech person at all. My buddy, um, I got a lot of buddies that are into biohacking and I'm the, I'm the complete opposite. I, I, I believe that carrying around a rock outside um, in the rain is really healthy. Um, I think a lot of this stuff... I mean, certainly, certainly getting feedback and finding out what you did during the day that you could make adjustments then. So I like that. But um, I know, I know when I worked hard, I fall asleep right away. Yeah. Like, like all these people that have sleeping issues, they don't like their mattress. They're just not working hard enough. You just need to get out there and, uh, and grab yeah. a rock by the sounds of it. <laughs> okay. So how about this one? Are there any books or podcasts that you'd recommend? Well, based on my previous answers, these are going to make perfect sense. I mm -hmm. like Shogun as a book. Everybody should read Shogun. Everybody should read. There's a great book by Stephen Callahan called Adrift. There's a great book, uh, Sir Ernest Shackleton's Endurance, about him getting stuck in the ice with his men for two years. Wow. So I, I love these kinds of stories 
that are against all odds, you know, complete darkness, survival, because what it does is it changes your frame of reference. Every once in a while when I'm having a bad day, um, uh, and we all have bad days, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking back and saying, man, can you imagine if I lived during the time uh, in the book Shogun, where like, it's just unbelievable what happens to this guy over and over and over. So, so anyway, I like, I like that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm going to have to read that book. And what we'll do is we will grab links to those and pop them into the show notes for today. And of course, we're going to be transitioning into our main interview now. And for anyone that isn't already aware of Spartan Obstacle Races, which there can't be too many people in the world that aren't, but we're going to talk about Spartan Obstacle Races. We're going to talk about the growth and participation and, and where you've come from. And we're also going to be speaking about DecaFit. And we have another very special guest joining us. So first and foremost, Joe, thank you for joining me today for the quick five, five questions. And let's transition straight into our main interview. Thanks to Joe for joining us for the quick five, five today. Now here's a message from our friends at Gym Sales. Gym Sales allows you to plan, implement, and monitor a proactive sales strategy that's automated and uniform. You can give your sales team the tools they need to capture, nurture, and convert new members, which means it's easier than ever before to grow your member base. Make sure you head over to gymsales.net to find out more information. Since our theme this week is group exercise, then it's a perfect excuse to rewind only a few weeks back to January 2020, when we had Emma Barry and Tracy Minnick on the show to share their news group fitness resolutions. If you missed that episode, then go to today's show notes at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com, scroll down and click the link in the timeline to listen to episode 273. Before we finish off today, a quick reminder that all the resources and links for today's episode can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. Active Management are a fitness business coaching company that help clients all over the world. And this month, I have a business tip for you all. Join the Active Management Facebook community. It's an amazing group and you'll meet like-minded fitness owners and managers from all over the world. All you need to do is go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash active management community. It's a highly engaging community where JT from Active Management shares loads of resources, things like photos from inside gyms, reasons to exercise, a monthly book club, challenges, and even ideas under 50 bucks. It's free and it is an awesome community. Once again, just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash active management community. Thank you all once again for joining me today. Enjoy your week ahead. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into lives of others. Mm -hmm.